Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Pyre. You're here with Randall Lafeeb, otherwise known as Drax Craven, when he has to admit the pressure of his upcoming liberation right against the essence is getting to him a bit. Also, my computer does not like this snow. Not one bit of it. Everything is cranky about this snow. Still, we are not facing the essence yet. I believe we have an appointment with the chastity before that. Ooh. Oh no. Come on, mouse. Oh, the mouse just works. Well, if it is a hunch, you may find something of value along this route. Pam says she, she can sway the coming right against the accusers in your favor here. I want to see what she means by that. I'm very curious. Instill fear in the accusers. Someone had better keep an eye on Pamitha as she flies off on one of her missions. You do your best to keep up with Pamitha as she delves into the thick underbrush of Cinderroot. She indicates that some of her winged sisters may be nearby to lend their aid. This is as far as you can follow, Rita darling. Please excuse me for a little while. She swoops off, leaving you on your own. Some time passes, during which you can almost feel the downside encroaching all around you, and then... Well, that was certainly interesting. I suggest we get out of here. It would appear the accusers soon will have a little accident that should dampen their spirits. Pamitha ensures the accuser shall suffer minus three hope for the next right. Return to the wagon. I don't think these extracurricular activities are within the rules of the rights, but I ha I don't feel any cosmic punishment, so let's move on. Eh, fuck Lendl. He's a piece of shit. To the Glade of Lou. Thank you, Pamitha. A messenger imp bearing news and rumors from the other side finds you somewhere in the razor brambles of Black Basin. This time around, the news pertains to Dalbert of the Triumvirate known as the Fate. In the Liberation Rite, he finally earned back his freedom after many failed attempts. However, that freedom he awarded to his son, Almer, so that he could go home instead. Much to Almer's disbelief, there seemed no way for the two to go together. Back in the Commonwealth, Almer grew reclusive in spite of his newfound status and the hospitality afforded him and in spite of Dalbert's wishes for his well-being. And as for Dalbert, once separated from his son, his advanced age at last cut up with him. He shall not conduct another rite. All of this shook the remaining members of the fate. If ever they regroup, it shall not be soon, and you shall not encounter them again. Afterwards, you find Faye on her own, speaking softly to herself. Watch over him, O oh scribes, watch over him. Please watch over him. The news brings you no joy, although you think the messenger him for delivering it, and cling to a hope that the legacy of the Old Heart clan is not yet complete. How many hints can the game drop? Lots. Long story short, you need to get Faye to that boy. They need each other. When they, Since they first laid eyes on each other, there was an unspoken bond or something. Oh, it's you guys. You know, I already forgot about how you left me and Dad back there in the middle of nowhere when we really needed help because we made it back eventually. So good to see you guys again, especially if you go ahead and buy something from me. <sighs> Thanks, Ron. Hmm. Or a person maker. Yeah. I got you some shrooms. There, now give me some of that purple juice. Give me some of that, that purple drink. All right, got some purple drink. They're leaving, Dad. Just look at how much we got this time. All right, let us commence this right against the accusers. Once more, you have returned to the Glade of Lou, and your companions stand ready beneath the still night sky, awaiting the commencement of the rites. You overhear some of their words to one another as you await the signal in the stars. You said we have to face the accusers tonight? Lower thee thy voice and raise thine eyes aloft. Just then you observe a glint of starlight that begins to shine above, and your companions soon fall silent. Oh boy. Yes, then there's the matter of the Titan stars. How many do I need to invoke? At least six. That's fine. Oh, I do not want to invoke the Archbeast Sangris. The last thing I need to do is give them a greater advantage in terms of how much uh, health their pyre begins with. Hmm. Limbless Arizak. 
I'm not sure if giving them five bonus damage would erode their advantage more than giving them plus 30 health. I don't know. I can't rightly say. I don't want to give them any more health. That's, that's the end of that. I don't want to give them more presence either, nor more quickness. Nor do I want to lower the amount of health my pyre starts with. All of this is bad. Very bad. I think I'm going to have to go with Biolanthius and just prevent them from scoring as much as possible. Um, I got I to gotta field Tizo so that he and Lendl can settle their business. I think I'm going to bring in Bertrude again just because of her uh, Hex of Defeat. Tis time again, you exiles of the Nightwings. You are returned once more unto the Glade of Liu. Your adversaries in the rites this eve shall be the accusers. My mind. Extinguish now their pyre, and glory shall be yours. Now prepare yourselves. I know, this is going to seem very much like the last rite, but you've got to understand. Volfred and um, uh, Bertrude are just so useful. You. We are ready for you, Nightwings. Come, accusers. Let us crush them and be done here quickly. Oh. Oh, my. Hello, Lendl. Horns starting to show. This paleth a Darbin for. You may not recognize them, but they are the same. <laughs> Even with Limbless Ariazek, their their respawn time is six seconds plus. Presence, hope, bonus self righteousness, but still. If we can banish him and his uh, his allies, they will be gone far too long for them to do anything. Relentless vigor, instantly recovers all the stamina. Permanently gains plus four presence. Enemies banished by Darbin 4 take 30% longer to return than usual. And after rushing, they can rush again. Okay. None of them have their rank five ability. Wait, no. Oh, sorry. Back over there, please. Uh, Lendl's bio. Belfeard Constable the Priest. Crime, corruption. Motive, pride. She's a demon who stands with Lendl and the accusers. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Darbin 4 and Vespaleth uh, did not take kindly to Lindel's abuse. Hmm. Anyway. Hmm. Maybe we can't help with Tizo's problem anymore, but still, I want to field him. Tizo. The little demon is here. Hmm. If only I could go back. The Guardian Sapling is only really good in front, unfortunately. Hello, Lord Fred. Oh, Gertrude's almost uh, out of inspiration. But still, her sudden blast and hex of defeat will be vital in defeating our opponents here. The choice is cast. We await the ancient rites commencement. Come then, Nightwings, we are prepared for you. Stop me! Oh crap. Got stopped. <laughs> oh crap. Alright, I wasn't expecting that. Playing some defense here. Got it. Inner glory! Have Vulfred doused the pyre? Are they crazy? Getting him in there is more trouble than it's worth, quite frankly. Gotcha. Damn. Okay, this is bad. You done doomed yourself. Perhaps Volfred will score instead. Crap. That's no way to escape. Hmm. 
Nope, not today. But he did end up passing it off. Damn! Yeah, I know it can't. Hold still, you misbegotten little pox! We're not finished with you yet! Tizo utters a, at Lindell a slew of the absolute worst in profanity. Your curses cannot possibly affect me any further, you foul spawn, for you have taken everything from me already! But if I am to be trapped in this forsaken hole with you for the remainder of my days, then I shall see to it that yours shall be as doleful as my own. That Lendl certainly enjoys a rousing speech. Crap. Means nothing in the right. There we go. I need some obstacles here. Then Bertrude's uh, advantages can come to bear. Crap. Take the orb. I don't want it anymore. All right. Okay. Gotcha. Simply monstrous. All right, come on. Come on. Crap. All right, so I can create a little barrier there. Gotcha. Damn. Crap. All right. That's that. Ugh. Okay, literally, if we take one more hit from one of the demons, at least, it's game over. He, she is not who I want. She is not who I want to be selected right now. Cool. Are you kidding me? Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. Shake it off. Shake it off. Come on. Yes. Good. More obstacles benefit me. Later. Boom! Taste the Hex of Defeat! Worst things worse? I could just do that again. Oh, damn. Too bad. Come on. Come get me. I'm just a little Wolfred. Damn! Okay, alright, that did not work out. All right, I'm just gonna attack Lendl real quick. Get him out of the way. Oh, jeez. Gotcha. Okay. Stop me. <laughs> or don't, that's fine. Yoink. Still, I came out much further ahead. What you gonna do, Lendl? I'll play defense for a little while. Wait for a little teaser to come back. Come on. Stop me. Okay, alright. I feel stopped. If only I had enough time to get in there. Yes. Nice! I believe a score from any of my other characters now will end this once and for all. Come on. Yes! Fortunately, Lendl returned too quickly. Yes! Woo! Holy shit! Hot damn! Oh. Now that was an all-for-nothing brawl. Blast! That a decorated constable of the Commonwealth should end up having to consort with fools as these in these accursed robes and miserable circumstances! Those damned scribes certainly exist, for it is clear they have no love for me or anyone of decent birth and station. Tizo hopes that Lendl trips upon his raiments in the dark. His bitter attitude toward the night wings and the rights is such that it affects his every move. A shame, really. 
Always is there greater knowledge to be gained. Woo! Damn. Oh, yes! This will be important. My old friend. My old friend. The rights demand we act as one mind, in perfect unison and harmony, and free of any doubt. I have grown more accustomed to being a part of the Nightwings today. All right, what do we got? Sturdy sapling. Ooh, and unstable sapling. I'll take the sturdy sapling. I need that big, big defense, you know? We're talking big defenses here. No little defenses. Until the stars align. Until then, voice. Until then. Oh, I didn't think I was coming out on that on top, but that's that's just that's just Volfred's power. Between his aura's large size, the sapling's aura, he counts as basically two characters. If you can implement his abilities correctly, you can overcome some pretty steep odds. Um, I suppose that's why he starts with so much inspiration. You're kind of supposed to rely on him, I guess. After you thwarted the accus accuser accusers in a convincing manner, there is little time for you to rest. As yet, the night beckons, and the next rite reveals itself to be a vital one. Robert, sorry. It is already time, reader. Come, see for yourself. The coldness of the season now presents to us another chance. He heads out straight away, and you follow in turn. Indeed, among the remaining stars, you see one with which you are familiar now burns ever brightly. The path to freedom is laid bare before you. You need merely pursue it. Solium, the Golden Star. Who will we be facing? The Essence? But we already knew this. It was a certainty. <sighs> Very well then. We will face Tamitha Thane. Already are the Nightwings summoned back to Mount Elodia. Picture the rites as a wheel broken free from a black wagon. It is turning uncontrollably and soon shall reach a sudden stop. We should have several chances left for someone to go free. Either us or else our adversaries, but of course not both. What is at stake each time is further complicated now, I must admit, knowing we have so few opportunities remaining. Those whom we send back, back into the Commonwealth, should our plan somehow fail, they may look back upon their exile with fondness. So returning to the Commonwealth is not inherently a mercy, I don't think. Moreover, there are also those among us whom we count on to prevail in the rites. We need them on the Nightwings just as much as we need them in the Commonwealth. We cannot simply grow our numbers here given the circumstances. And so, who stays, who goes? These choices affect us all. No pressure there, my boy. Now, I don't know about you, but I shall go and take my leave for now. Let's set forth again at daybreak. <sighs> Just gotta pick some fruit and shrooms. Also, I wanna have a chat with Sandra. What's on your mind? Oh, I can't ask her what's on her mind. Well then. Huh. I recently used her for a practice bout, and I had the opportunity to ask her what was on her mind. I, I guess I missed my chance. What in the hell was that noise? Oh god. Mmm. Seconds per frame right there. How about those snow? Emperor's fall? Tizo shall gain favor. And Volfrid shall gain favor. Volfrid worked out really well against the essence in the last right we had. I'm planning to field Fey in the lead. Um. Volfred and then Gilman. You, as you'll recall, uh, the last time I almost defeated the Essence, it was Gilman who led me to victory, or er, as close as I could. His his speed alone puts them to shame, and as such, he's a vital asset. And I would like to field Pamitha, but her loyalties to her blood sister and their unresolved. Um, their unresolved issues could create problems. You make landing upon Mount Elodia, where Volfred pulls you aside while the others complete the post-flight inspection. 
He puffs at his pipe before speaking up. Reader, as you know, I now wear, I now wear the raiments once again. This means that I myself may soon be worthy to regain my freedom in the eyes of the eight scribes. No, however, that it is not my wish to go just yet. It is true I could be of some benefit to our plan back in the Commonwealth, but I feel my place is here for the time being. Perhaps once the Nightwings are on a surer footing in their path, my time shall come. Those are my feelings on the matter, and I wanted you to know. I shall, of course, defer to you. Our path is not to contradict the reader's will. Anyway, I trust that all of us, yourself included, shall find our freedom. If not soon, then by when all this is over. The Beyonder Crystal seeks Volfred. One trial remaining. What's on your mind? Please, reader, leave me be. I ask that you leave me be. Go about your business, go watch the stars die out, and get your idiots their freedom. And you be sure to tell that herald with whom you consort that Sandra the Unseeing did her job. You tell him that. Perhaps that way he shall put in a good word, and the scribe shall finally provide me a bit of a brief. She falls silent for a time. I do not know what else to do, reader. But you remain with her, letting her draw whatever strength and comfort from your thoughts as you are able to afford. That was kind of you. However, let us conduct our business. I care not for your pity. Do not come visit me again like this, without my asking. I insist. Just name the victim, and I shall be more than pleased to make him or her suffer for a bit. I name Wolfred. Take the Tailwind Crest. You shall need it. His rank is average. It's it's risen from leaden to average. Interesting. You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Fulfred. That fancy talking sap you mean? I shall be interested to see if he has learned something since we last sparred like this. Let us bring him forth. Soon Fulfred appears in heat of the summons. So it is my turn then, is it? Let us see what we can do, my boy. Oh, let's see indeed. Please. Who needs to jump when you can teleport? Or burrow, as the case may be? I'm not exactly sure how he locomotes. The apparition Sandra appears and unfastens her mask. Listen well, Sap, you answer to me here. As you will, O oh Sandra the Unseeing. Proper as ever, then. Though I wonder if you have if you have the wherewithal that you project. Show me then what you can do without the benefit of those whom you would lead, and let us see if you and your lovely reader have reached a thorough understanding as of yet. Interesting. Oh wow, that is a quick sprout. Bonk. What in the hell? What happened? <laughs> that did not work out. No, no, no. Damn. All right, this little this little guy. Got him. Ooh, very nice singing voice. All right. Let's put the sprout there instead. Where it is immediately deadly. Later, nerds. Hot damn. Oh, no! Oh! Oh, damn. It is interesting how much the um, Titan stars complicate things. Without their meddling, these rights would be so much easier. I am grateful for the privilege of your time, good Sandra. Flattery shall never get you anywhere with me, Sap. 
nonetheless, your performance was sufficient, and you passed my test. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. Oh, boy. The Commonwealth of Sar. Huh. I wonder what Volfred's trinket will be. We've seen a great many bizarre abilities and powers. I had not seen that Sandra in some time. She's not changed a bit. But it would seem she left something for us, did she? Lose bow. Volfred's blink ability transforms, transports him farther than usual. His sisters, brothers, fathers, mothers, all were part of him until the arch split them in twain. Uh, interesting. Well, as much as I enjoy the Tailwind Crest, it may be ultimately unnecessary with Lou's bow toe. Interesting. Usable only by Volfred. Moving on. Seek the Harp Scribe's favor. Having completed the post-flight inspection, you and Volfred visit the monument of Trieste Tithis here in Emperor's Ascent. You're gonna pray to Trieste to go against one of her progeny? You're bold, Volfred. Orlek. Was this somehow your doing? You who cursed the scribes and the stars themselves. I pray for you this time. And if the scribes will for the rights to be ended, then we shall have to work with that. No setback is insurmountable. Soon he is finished paying his respects. You return to the wagon in silence, feeling as though Trieste Tithis has shown you favor. You soon shall ascend the mountain, though there is time now to pursue your vocations. Volford gained plus one quickness for the next ride. Useful. Useful. Mentor companion. But who, though? Who would be worth mentoring? Now, when they're all so close. And so far. Certainly not Volfred. If only I could get Gertrude a little bit more. I would certainly trade Stubborn Flame for 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 Gilman's uh, Avenging Aid and Greater Cleave. Uh, so close. Hmm. It is difficult to decide. Guiding light. Then who shall follow? All right, I'm going to give it to Bertrude just because she is very close to leveling up and Gilman is not. Let us then discuss these matters which you believe should be of benefit. You and Bertrude go over her understandings of her aura and its connection to her presence, both physical and spiritual. The discussion proves informative. Sweet. Such power emanates from within, which can be harnessed toward our goals. I like Bertrude's dark bent. She's always a little not not evil, but she's always a little. Mm, you know what I mean? She's not. She's not. She's not the kindest person. Gilman to the temple system. I just remember, Gilman was always able to sneak past them. I only hope that he will be able to do so again. He is so small, and yet that gives him advantage. On route to the mountaintop, you pass by a monument to under King Ores, and Sir Gilman happens to take notice. It seems that this knight's test of honor is just to begin. He is to understand the stars themselves are vanishing? Impossible, he says, for how can there be such a thing as honor in this world if the stars themselves are wont to leave it behind? Soon he is finished paying his respects. As you prepare to continue your ascent, you sense that the Underking Ores has shown him favor. Plus three glory for the next rite. We will need it. You and your fellow exiles gather at the foot of Scribe's Gate before an archway carved of stone where stands the Gate Guardian. Salutium, Greetings to you, Celeste. I see the exiles of the Nightwings have returned. 
even as the cycle of the rites begins drawing to a close. The Nightwings accept this is the will of the scribes. The Gate Guardian laughs at this softly for some reason. And you, Tariq? Do you accept their will as well? But the Lone Minstrel does not answer. It is no matter now. Nightwings, each of you, come forth and state what it is you seek whilst crossing the scribes' gate. One by one, the Nightwings declare themselves, who all pass through as before. When Volfred takes his turn, Celeste stops him. Bye. You. I see you wear the raiments once again. Explain. The cycle of rites is ending. While I do not know exactly why, I have my fears. One of my contemporary... He who fell from the summit long ago, he lives and seeks his liberty again. He stands against us now and believes his triumvirate to be the true Nightwings. I remember well the contemporary whom you mean. Then the Nightwings stand divided. Yes, and so I wear the raiments once again, in case it may help to right this wrong. For I am Volfred Sandalwood, and I seek liberty for each of us so that one day we all might stand shoulder to shoulder on the other side and bring our freedom to the people there. She considers Volfred's words for a moment. I see. Then move along. The guardian of Scribes Gate regards you all, and then she beckons you on. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome. Go forth with glory. Celeste? What is it, Tariq? The will of the scribes. Long have we both followed. I think you would agree. In equal measure has it drawn us close, as it has separated us. But if their aim now is to keep us apart for another age or longer, then... No, I do not accept their will. You blaspheme, Tariq, and at the gate no less. But the lone minstrel simply puts his hat back on. Then may the scribes themselves admonish me. Until tomorrow night, Celeste. My, my, my. Tensions are flaring all over. Even the gate guardians and heralds cannot keep their blasphemy in check. Having reached the pound peak of Mount Elodiel again, you cannot help but reflect on whether one of your companions may go free this night or remain stranded in the downside as Faye did after last time. Who's, who's chatting in the black wagon? Volfred. He seems to have something on his mind. Mm. Wolford looks up at you as you approach and smiles. That is nice. I never thought I would say such things, my boy. But it is good to wear the raiments and the rites once more. The march of time does have a way of healing certain hurts. Besides, the Nightwings of today, we are very different beasts than the Triumvirate which took me in almost a decade ago. Ours was a Triumvirate of exactly three, well, four with Tizo, who proved to be an exception, though historically, the Nightwings never took on more exiles than needed. I've mentioned my predecessor, Brighton, and my former companions, Arisa and Orlek. Perhaps, naively, I had hoped my time with them would not be relevant, directly to what we now attempt. But seeing as our stories are now intertwined, do let me know if there is more you wish to learn of them. Tell me about Brighton. You inquire about Brighton who you understand was liberated prior to when Volfred first joined the Nightwings. I never met Brighton in person, but I know him rather well by now, though for that matter, my boy, so do you. Oh! Pause the video, submit your votes, guess who it is? He says your reaction for a moment and then... Brighton was born wealthy, but not special otherwise. You would have no reason to have heard of him. He was exiled for negligent misconduct. I do not know exactly why and don't care for spreading rumors. I first heard of him through Arisa and Orlek, who found in me a suitable replacement following his liberation. They spoke little of him. Orlek gave the impression they did not see eye to eye, but he assured me I soon would hear from him myself. Indeed, as I became accustomed to the book which you know well by now, I soon began to hear the voice. Volford looks at you, as if to see if you yet take his meaning. You see, my boy, after Brighton's liberation, he assumed a new identity within the Commonwealth, and a new responsibility to the triumvirate which liberated him. That voice you hear from time to time, whensoever the stars align, 
is his. He is no longer Brighton. He is none other than Arch Justice Androbales the Ninth himself, the Grand Judge and figurehead under whose watch the Commonwealth is governed to this day. Those who violate the law of the Commonwealth face sentencing by the appointed Arch Justice. Liberated exiles retain certain burdens to their own triumvirates. They have much to thank them for, not just their freedom, but their exalted status in the Commonwealth. The theocratic rules of the Commonwealth, they do not wear masks and raiments simply for the sake of ceremony. They are not who they appear to be. Their public pasts are nothing but a fabrication. Like Brighton, they were all once exiles as well. Brighton, that voice. He has no love for either one of us by now. He knows full well what we attempt to do, yet he is bound by the tradition of the rites. He shall always stand on ceremony and complain, but I think he knows deep down that he is utterly powerless. How ironic that one of such high status in the Commonwealth should be so frightened of some long-forgotten exiles such as we. Anyway, that's Brighton for you. He must have seen you the potential to be one of his staunch supporters for a time. If that's a path you'd wanted to pursue, I should apologize. Now then, whom else should we talk about? Tell me about Arisa. She betrayed Orlek. Why? I'm afraid you know the brunt of it, my boy, but I suppose you ought to know something of Arisa's past, lest you be quick to judge her solely by her actions. Mind you, I would never make excuses for the terrible choice she ultimately made, but her life, I understand, was very difficult. Arisa had been exiled for the foulest of acts. You could see it plainly branded on her face. Such was the heinousness of what she did in the eyes of the Commonwealth. She was an apprentice blacksmith in her youth. Taking up the post left by her brother, he had fallen in battle on the blood border, despite wielding their father's own lance and armor. Her father never quite recovered after this, and had grown cruel and detached. It was Arisa who took the brunt of his fury. He expected the impossible of her. One day, it was too much, and when next he lashed out at her, well, she struck back. Again, and again, and again. When they came for her, her father was gone, and she was not herself. She was promptly cast into the downside for the crime, where her hatred for the Commonwealth only grew. Risa always was intense in her demeanor, haunted by her father's memory. More than that, her chief motive for wanting back her freedom was, in hindsight, not a healthy one. She longed to join our nation's enemies, to build for the high-wing remnants a great siege engine that could shatter the defenses of the Commonwealth and forever end their feud. What she ultimately did to Orlek, it was an act of pure and thoughtless desperation. I do not think that it was simply evil, nor do I think that it was personal. What is a praxis? I often wondered, though, if in her final moments in the Shimmer Pool, she understood what she had done in the depths to which she had fallen. For years, I must admit, I hated her, but now, my only hope is that she found a peace untenable during a relatively short life on the downside and the Commonwealth. Furthermore, I hope the life of Arisa offers some perspective, yet, to those of us who have not made the same mistakes. Now then, was there something else? I know a bit about Orelek, but what was he like before? Before the anger. I was very, very sick, you know, when I first landed in the downside. The long trip down the river must have been a little too much for me. It was Orelek who found me. He could not have known my capacity to read before he revived me. He was a physician, intolerant of the sight of suffering of any kind. Not just any physician, mind you. A gifted, highly decorated one. He served at the front. Back then, skirmishes erupted frequently, and those such as Orelek, they had to deal with many casualties on either side. In time, he said he grew repulsed by what he saw. This sowed in his yard a yearning for an end to all the bloodshed. So he tried to use his status to negotiate a treaty with the Highway Remnants. It must, have, it must have gone about how you'd expect. He was given direct orders to return to the front, but when he refused to soil his hands again, they cast him to the downside. Here, he gained the notice of the Nightwings, and before long, he grew to be one of the finest rights conductors anyone had ever seen. He was instrumental in the liberation of his companions, 
whose roles in the triumvirate were later filled by Arisa and myself. In time, Orelek's own opportunity for freedom had come up. He longed for it so that with his exalted status he might stand a better chance of negotiating peace. However, on the evening of his liberation, you know the story from that point. Fulford breathes a heavy sigh. He and I were kindred spirits for a while. I could not bear to think that he was gone, and now I still cannot entirely believe that he is back. He is our adversary now, transformed, grown cold. Still, part of me is happy that he lives. Make no mistake, of course, I should not be swayed against our plan, not by Orlek or anyone. As I have said before, we share a higher calling now. As for Orlek, he wants his freedom still. Although I wonder if he still remembers why. Anyway, is there anything else, my boy? No, thank you, Fulfred. You bid Fulfred a good afternoon and leave him with his memories. My pleasure, reader. Reflecting on the past from time to time helps demonstrate how far we've come, and yet how much farther we have yet to go. Hmm. Anyway. Ron? Hey guys, so like, I don't know what's going on up there with all them stars electing real weird and stuff, but let me tell you something here. You ain't gonna find a better deal on all this stuff from anybody, and I mean anybody in the downside. So you can trust me when I tell you that, okay? So go ahead and stock up. I'm just here to sell the downberry and the shroom. I am going to stock up a lot on the roids. I don't know if I can only use one per character per right, but we're going to find out. Tell all your friends about us, because I already told all mine. We're going to find out how many steroids I can pump into my exiles next time on Let's Pay Pyre. Good night.